national president, Jerry Dias. So many manufacturing sectors. I'm feeling a lot more comfortable today. Last night, Canada reached an agreement in principle with the United States and Mexico on a modernized and updated North American free trade agreement. very clear we needed a good deal not just any deal and the labor movement is having an influential role in these negotiations over the weekend the prime minister consulted with jerry dias head of unifor canada's largest private sector union jerry made the decision very early on that uh, to be involved and actually have uh, some credibility you needed to be involved so from the very first round of negotiations very first day we we were there and we never missed a round of negotiations we were there from the get-go and jerry said to us he said you know what guys Union leaders are the best negotiators around. Negotiating is what we do. So let me help you. We were able to articulate what a trade deal should look like. We were able to talk about people, working class people. We were able to raise issues that have never been raised in a trade deal. Trade deals have never been about people. They've always been about free movement of capital. So this is the first trade deal. It's a huge trade deal. It's 24% of the world's GDP. And what did we talk about? People. We talked about jobs. We talked about jobs in Canada. We talked about jobs in the United States. We talked about jobs in Mexico. This deal has our fingerprints all over it, and we should be proud of that. So many things that were attained, I will argue, would never have even been discussed if, the, if Unifor didn't participate. Si ils veulent qu'on appuie à, à la fin le résultat, ben d'être partie prenante, c'est fondamental. He was a really good advisor, but also, crucially, um, he had a lot of backbone. And he gave me and the team some confidence um, to go in there and take strong positions and to feel like the country was going to be with us. Not just auto, but all of the issues, telecommunications, media, forestry. We, we, we were an expert on a number of different uh, aspects of the, of the negotiations. And I really found I could rely on Jerry for his judgment and for his support. And I appreciate it. And I felt, you know, I'm talking about one person, but I really felt um, that it was a whole union uh, that we were working with. And it was really important. It was a really important part of our Team Canada approach. See that guy standing to the side there with a smile on his face? That's my next guest, someone who's no stranger to the talks. He's an outside insider. He really knows what's going on. Uniform President Jerry Dias. Look, we're not going to get bullied. We're not going to get pushed around. We're not going to have Donald Trump threaten us every day that there's going to be a 25% tariff imposed on autos. That doesn't sell well in Canada. And frankly, we're a small nation. We're not a stupid nation. Yeah, well, Jerry has a... He has a very unique way about himself, and uh, who better to be the spokesperson for, not just Unifor, but for working people in North America. But now there's a clear message to the U.S. that we're not going to get caught where we sign an agreement, and then a week later, the Trump administration imposes tariffs on the auto sector. Look, you've got one tweak at the end of the day, maybe two if you're lucky. So the tweak has to be the auto industry. You got to make sure that we get 2.6 million. And I was fascinated a few hours before the deadline, Christian called and said, guess what? And I said, it's the auto industry that's holding up the deal, right? She went, you're absolutely right, you nailed it. And uh, we just sat down to have dinner and, um, and we got a phone call from Jerry. And he said, uh, he's like, look, uh, you know, they were going to announce this deal um, about 20 minutes ago. And, uh, and one of the numbers they wanted to use on, on the auto um, uh, protections, uh, how many vehicles could go to the U.S. without hitting the tariff, he says, I'm not happy with it. He said, so right now, you know, North America and the world are watching and waiting, and the only thing holding up this agreement right now is Unifor. There's always those things where you get down to, you know, the 11th hour, the deadline's at midnight, it's whatever it was, it's, the deadline was at 10 because we were having cabinet meetings, uh, like 9.30 they're phoning saying we can't get 2.6, we can only get 2.3. We said, listen, don't call back until we got 2.6 million. And the Liberal, um, uh, the Liberal caucus was meeting at 10 p.m. on Sunday night, two hours before the deadline. 
And sure as heck, the phone call came at about 5 to 10 from the PMO's office saying, you got your 2.6 million. And so we celebrated because we knew that we just protected the number one export industry in the country. Bon, sur le résultat de la négociation, euh, c'est sûr qu'il y, y a eu des gains euh, importants si on pense aux droits des travailleurs, si on pense au, au secteur de l'auto, euh, si on pense à l'environnement, euh, si on pense euh, à la protection du chapitre 19. Mais dans une négo, euh, c'est pas vrai qu'on on obtient sur toute la ligne. Donc, euh, c'est sûr que dans le dossier du bois d'oeuvre, il reste du travail à faire. Dans le dossier de l'aluminium, il va falloir continuer à se battre. I think in a large part, thanks to us, thanks to the voice of Unifor, we've made changes to the template on how trade agreements work. For us, it was exciting because it was the opportunity of a lifetime. And frankly, we had the opportunity. We kicked the door up and we walked right through it. And it took some courage, but also it was just the right thing to do.